Let's, uh, let's get back on the markets here with Matthew Orton, portfolio strategist at Caroline Tower Advisors. Matt, so I guess the play here is just invest uh, in the Kardashians, right? Hey, Brian, good morning. You know, they, they certainly have a knack for picking good businesses or, or whether, you know, the tail wags the dog, I'm not quite sure, but certainly it's a great boost for anyone that gets their seal of approval. <laughs> sure. Uh, but what do you make of this market rally? Give me a reason, uh, give viewers a reason to stay bullish here. Valuations looking stretched, uh, big cap tech continues to be on fire. And, and you look at this market, it's, it's on autopilot, which to me should raise red, some, uh, some red flags. You know, Brian, it's really interesting because it, it certainly feels like it's been a one-way street, but there's been a lot more volatility than we've seen lately. June, for the most part, I mean, through Friday, was down for the month outside of the NASDAQ. Mildly, the S&P was down about 1%, the Dow 1.3, the NASDAQ was up 3%. But, you know, it's certainly not the type of gains that we saw in April and then we're, you know, we, we saw in the month of May as well. I think the big question investors are asking themselves are how much is this spike in COVID related um, uh, COVID related um, findings? How much is that going to derail the potential V-shaped recovery or economic reopening story? What I'm looking at right now and what I'm taking a little bit of solace in is the fact that a lot of the states that have had delayed reopenings, mostly in the Northeast, those still remain on track. You're still not seeing any increases or spikes in diagnosis, and that's helping to offset some of the increases you're seeing in states across the Sun Belt, like Florida and Texas and Arizona. So as long as that can remain the case, I think the overall reopening story can be still be um, optimistic for the market. Hey, Matthew, it's Heidi Chung here. So talking about that V-shaped market recovery, a lot of that was due to big tech. And I know that this Facebook story was definitely a huge one on Friday, but it's something that I... I think will certainly continue for the near term or even longer than that, just because companies like Facebook, Google, they rely heavily on that advertising revenue. And when that advertising revenue is threatened by um, a lot of companies pulling out like this, does that in turn threaten the big tech rally? And should investors be concerned here? You know, Heidi, it, it could potentially have some reverberations for the big tech rally. But that being said, it's going to be really interesting to follow what comes out in earnings season. You know, I think outside of the spike in COVID cases, the next big catalyst isn't until we get to July 14th and actually start seeing what the money center banks and after that, the technology companies are reporting. Facebook is in a unique situation because they have the best platform for reaching individuals and reaching the consumer. So the ability for a lot of these companies to just shut off Facebook is going to be an experiment. Can they replace what they're losing by not using Facebook? I don't think we know the answer to that yet. It seems like Facebook is getting the message that they need to make these changes. So I think there's going to be some sort of middle ground down where Facebook will start to make the incremental changes that they want and you'll start to see them readopt. Uh, on the small business front, though, there's probably not as much wiggle room, especially if you're starting to see shutdowns or you're starting to see a slowdown to the economic reopening. A lot of these smaller businesses are still going to be reliant on the reach of social media and on the reach of online. And so that could still provide a backstop for companies like Facebook or Google for their advertising revenues as they start to implement the changes uh, that, that are being asked for by a lot of their biggest partners. Hey, Matthew, and that's Bray here. There seems to be a fiscal cliff coming in July because of the benefits, the extended benefits will be ending. So are the markets pricing in here a st second stimulus? You know, I think we, we've heard mentions by the president, we've heard mentions by the House, by the Republicans, that they all want to have some sort of infrastructure bill, some sort of additional stimulus bill. And that's absolutely going to be critical. What's been really interesting on the path of the recovery has been you know, which consumers have increased their spending the most and which still have been left out. And there was a really interesting study done that actually found that the consumers of the lowest quartile income earners have recovered their spending back to 2019 levels. But the top quartile income earners are actually still about 40% lower than they were in 2019. That's a significant gap, and that probably has to do with this issue of safety. Do I actually feel safe going out, spending money, or changing my habits? So getting that group of people to start opening up their wallets, to start going out, is going to be critical for the recovery going forward. And to your question of the fiscal cliff and, and having some sort of extra stimulus bill, I think 
passing some sort of gap because we're not seeing uh, unemployment decrease as much as I think we were expecting. A lot of the easiest gains are already in. So there's going to be the onus on the government to, to get their act together and pass some sort of measure that's going to further the consumer, that's going to hold the consumer over until you're able to see more sustainable decreases in unemployment. It seems like both parties want to pass this. It seems like for an election coming up, this is an election year, it's going to be important for everyone to say, I did something for the American people. So the ability to cross that line is probably even better than it would be in any other situation. So I think my base case, and when I talk to clients, is that we're going to have something get passed probably late July, early August that's going to help tide the consumer over. And that's also going to help tide small businesses over, uh, especially. Uh, Matt, before we let you go, uh, do you think we're headed towards a period of underperformance uh, in the broader market and to your end? Uh, to Inez's point, fiscal cliff is coming. We have an election, election season, and, and there's a lot uh, about to hit the fan with that regards. Why stay long in the market? You know, what I like to say is uncertainty breeds opportunity. And so when you have these pullbacks in the market, when you have heightened volatility in the market, these are the opportunities to reset and pick the areas where you want to be. We had such a sharp and fast recovery. A lot of investors felt left out, like they've missed it. And you've seen that reflected in a failure to, to get true bullish sentiment, even among retail investors, where you're seeing a lot of speculative activity. When you look at the AAII bulls versus bears, you're still at fairly low levels. Yep. So reasons for optimism is the fact that you can see an unwinding of more bearish sentiment. You're also seeing strong beats over economic data points. So last week we had, or two weeks ago, we had retail sales, um, Philly Fed, leading indicator index, all massive beats over what we were expecting. So if yep. we can head into earnings season and have earnings beats more than what we were expecting, and guidance is going to be critical. If you can get management teams to start issuing guidance again, or start to increase optimism in the message that they're telling us, that's going to be a potential catalyst for the markets to move higher. Right now, we've been in a very extended period. We've been in an overbought period. We're yep. resetting expectations right now. So this is a great opportunity for anyone who's still optimistic long-term to pick their spots in the market. And you know, I personally still like IT. I think healthcare, which has been a large laggard this quarter, presents some very interesting opportunities. So, so those are the places I'd be looking for uh, to utilize weakness to, to reset my, uh, my weights. All right, let's leave it there. Matthew Orton, Portfolio Strategist at Carillon uh, Tower Advisors. Good to see you this morning. Great, thanks very much. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.